All right, as they'd say in the business, good enough for government work. What is going on, YouTube? This is Jim, back with another video, back from Los Angeles, California, and I finally got my hands on this bad boy right here. This is the PlayStation DualSense Edge controller. I didn't do an unboxing video because there's a ton of really good ones out there. I'll tell you, I love it. I'll give a more formal review later on. What I wanted to go over tonight with you all was the new settings and the, some of the feature sets that are included in the software that I think you're gonna wanna dive in and kinda look into. So you wanna open up your uh, PlayStation <clears throat> menu, your settings menu and go over to accessibility and you will see you now have a new option here called the DualSense Edge Wireless Controller. So click on that. Here's your home screen essentially of all the wonderful things that your dual sense is gonna do under the custom profiles, but I'll quickly go over some of the other things you can do from this menu. Uh, you can change your profile on the fly by hitting the two function buttons with a combination of any of the directional buttons or face buttons to load up various profiles you have. I'll go over the profiles and the settings in just a moment. But here you can change what sort of feedback you get, whether it's a vibration indicator or an actual notification on your screen. Probably makes sense to have all three, which is set by default. Here is your function menu where you can um, modify some of the settings in that. Um, brightness of the indicator. Most people leave their controller on dim. It gives you a little more battery life. Plus, if you're like me and you play in pretty much pitch black of darkness, with the exception of the LEDs I have around here, um, you're probably gonna want this on dim so it doesn't reflect against the television screen. If you missed anything, there's a quick little tour when you first turn on the controller and connect it to your PlayStation 5. You can go back and watch that tour. Here's where you'll check to make sure you have the latest software version, which of right now is 0100. And I'm sure as more people get their hands on this and more bugs or functionality is included, this will be the place to update your firmware. Lastly, you can reset everything back to manufacturer settings if you so desire. But what most of you guys are gonna be interested in is under the custom profile setting. Now, I've already created a custom profile called Jimmy, because that's who I am. But here is where you would assign your function buttons to like default Jimmy or not assign. So if I'm back in like the main screen, right? And I hit the function button and triangle, you will see, uh, let me do this again, hold on. It's like, it's almost like I know what I'm doing. <laughs> it's almost like I know what I'm doing. I think you have to be in a game to do it. Um, there you can see, um, why is it not doing it? Oh, I know why. <laughs> I'm not hitting the function button. I'm hitting the paddle on the back. There we go. <laughs> you can see it says you change your default and I think you do from the home screen too. There we go, now you can change it. You change your profile. So I'm hitting the function button on the bottom face button there and I'm hitting triangle or I'm hitting circle or the other ones that I haven't assigned yet, obviously they're not working. I am still getting muscle memory because I'm so used to my Elite controller that I keep screwing all this up and I keep wanting to press the button on the back but it's the function button on the front. I need to be more mindful of that. All right, enough of me rambling. Let's dive into some of the settings you're gonna have here. So regardless of the profile name or the function setting, this is what you're gonna have. You're gonna have your customized uh, button settings. Here you could change any of the buttons to any other button if you want. Um, here is where most people are probably gonna spend most of their time. That is adjusting what you want the paddles to be. Now these are the back paddles. Unlike the Elite controller, the Dual Sense Edge only has two paddles and it's up to you what those configurations are. Most people will probably do cross and circle as I have, and maybe not in that configuration, maybe swapped, but that is most likely what you're gonna be using. Most games utilize triangle as reload, which you don't necessarily need to have a hot button for, and most games use um, uh, uh, squares of reload, and triangle is like picking up items or plates or something like that. Again, probably don't need to have that toggle, but if you wanna select either of them, you click, and here is a list of all of the possible things you can make that back paddle be. You could change just any of the face buttons or the trigger buttons, or just disable it if you decide not to use it at all. If you did decide to disable it, not really sure why you do that, but here's where you would do it. The other thing a lot of people will definitely be interested in is the stick sensitivity and dead zone settings. You can adjust this for both the left or the right stick independently, which is really, really nice. 
And here you can see I'm using my left analog stick to kind of wiggle. You can see the graph on the bottom left, as well as the uh, mapping of the controller there to show you what direction I'm aiming in. And you have a slew of sensitivity curves, way more than I've seen on the Leak controller, unless they have patched it since I looked at it last time. Most people will probably stick with either default or precise, and I'll tell you why. Default is just what you're used to. Quick is gonna give you a very, very accelerated, snappy movement. The response curve is gonna be very high. You're most likely using this and you're gonna overshoot targets. The other controller type I think a lot of people will like is precise, which is almost the exact opposite of quick. You could see the response curve there is like a half U. Uh, during this, you're gonna get a very minimum but stable response curve. And it's good if you are overshooting targets. Unlike what quick is going to make you overshoot, this will make you almost undershoot. Now, most games do have sensitivity settings inside of them that allow you to fine tune the sick calibration. This is yet another way of doing it. If you find you're playing a game and the sensitivity is a little too twitchy and I'm looking at you, Resident Evil, this is probably a place where you're gonna to wanna to change it. Steady is a very, very slow but stable response curve, regardless of how far or how little you move your stick. This would be good for somebody who wants to move smoothly or I think if you have some sort of disability, most likely you may have your own custom controller, but if you don't, and you have a hard time controlling how much you push the stick in either direction, I think Steady would be a phenomenal uh, tool for that. And maybe even for somebody who's just learning how to play and just kind of getting the, the gist of like up, down, left, right, you know, circle strafing, that kind of like basic first person shooter mentality, this may be a good place for them. You'll have, you also have the digital, which is basically max almost instantly. It's kind of like quick, but on steroids. And then you have dynamic, which is kind of a, um, only on the extremes. Uh, this is kind of allowing you to, if you want to aim just a little bit in the center or snap it really hard to get a really snappy response, here's where you do that. Now, the nice thing is you could change these curve settings and you can see the output of them here. You can see how little or far you actually are moving the stick versus what the game is actually registering on your behalf. You can see the two circles in the right-hand side. You can also see the curve as I'm filling it up on the left-hand side so you can see where that sweet spot is for you to adjust. I like to keep it on default because that's how I personally know how to play, but it's up to you. Uh, I guess I should mention, regardless of any curve you do that's not default, you have a curve adjustment toggle for even additional fine tuning. And then if your stick does start to drift at any point in time, you do have a dead zone adjustment. Again, these are independent of left or right. So if you're starting to get stick drift in the left or the right, you're gonna have the option to adjust that here, which is really, really cool. Uh, very similar, but different now looking at the trigger dead zone. You can see as I start to flex the trigger, uh, you can see how much of an input range is, is allowed. You could adjust that if you wanted to start at a higher range or to cap off at a different range. You keep in mind, you also have the trigger locks on the back. So if I, if I tap the hair lock, you could see it, the only option I have is basically completely on or off. There's no real sense of like um, moving through the ranks there. And if I put the trigger lock in the middle setting, you can see I kind of get a little bit. It, I'm, I'm obviously the lock prevents me from going too far, but um, that's kind of up to you. And then obviously you have a nice smooth range of motion. But this is great in combination with those hair lock triggers on the back, the physical piece of plastic on the back of the controller for even additional fine tuning. If for whatever reason you have a dead zone in the game or you wanna get the most snappy possible response, this is where you're gonna do that. Um, nothing too exciting here. This is vibration sensitivity, uh, intense, vibration intensity, and I believe this is already existent on the traditional DualSense controller where you can turn it off, medium, weak, or strong, which is standard setting. And then same for the um, trigger effect intensity. That's how hard you have uh, the trigger effect if you're playing certain games that maybe have a little bit more tension when you're like drawing a bow in Horizon Zero Dawn or Forbidden West or whatever, or using a weapon in like Cold War, for example. And you could adjust that here if you wanna turn it off, weak, medium. I believe both of these settings already exist, so I don't think there's anything new here. Once you have the settings you like, you name it, you can then rename, delete, or move that profile to another profile. And once you have it set, you're done. You go to the home screen and you can play any game that you want. It's super easy to toggle between these settings just by hitting the function button and um, any of the face buttons. Now, one other thing I'll mention that isn't really explained too well 
and I, as a matter of fact, I don't even know if it's in the settings here, I'm gonna go back and check really quickly, is um, the function buttons themselves do uh, change um, what you want. Oh yeah, here, there it is down at the bottom. I wanted to show you that um, you can adjust by holding the function button and hitting up and down on the D-pad, you by default will adjust your headphone volume and by hitting the function button and hitting left and right, you will adjust the spread between your game and chat audio, which is awesome to have this toggle. But I know Sony has been trying very hard to have these options down here at the bottom, particularly when you're in a party, but this is hitting a button. It kind of takes you out of the action, having to jump over, go to your sound quickly, start toggling things, moving stuff around, whatever. Now with the touch of a function button, you're directly into that menu and you're ready to go. So. Hope you found this video informative, interesting. I hope it helps and gives you guys some, you know, a little bit of uh, thoughts and kind of understanding behind the really advanced features of this controller. I will have a full review on it later on. If you'd like, go check out my playlist. I'll post a link to that in the description below. You can see some of my other controller reviews where I've talked about the Elite controller and how to access Dolby on your uh, Xbox and things like that. So make sure you check all that content out. But for that, for this video, I'm done. I'm getting back into Call of Duty. Thank you all so much for watching. Take care of yourselves. And until next time, I will see you guys on the other side.